Is that it? Did we do it? What's up? We have a car! An Impala! It's right here. I swear. It's not. We're getting it. It'll be here soon. He said 10 minutes about 8 minutes ago. So, it'll be here soon. Uh, we have a full Impala to do, minus the windshield. Uh, should have streamed the first one uh, because we did a ceramic Durango. That was a happy little, like, you know? You guys are so much cooler. I, I love you, Twitch and Facebook, but you guys are like, when I go live, you guys are just like, look at you right here. You're just boom, 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 boom. What's up? I go on Facebook and it's like, hi. What's happening? Oh, that's what a good first, good first username. What's up, man? How do we get notified when Glass Aid comes back in stock? Oh no, I don't know. I'll go live and say Glass Aid is back in stock. I can make a post. I could probably send out an email too. We have an email thingy. But yeah, we totally have a car here. Oh, oh, see, look at that. I get, I get the occasional Twitch, Twitch chat. Sorry, I don't mean to call you out, but my Twitch audience is like way low. And then YouTube comes in and is like, buh, 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 buh. So on the website, uh, if you, I don't know, if you're on the website for like five seconds, it'll hit you with a little like, hey, something about videos. So do that, and then I'll, tr I'll be sure to do it for Glass Aid. Come on, give thumbs up. I was first. <laughs> I don't know who was first. Why is it doing double? That's the other thing. I don't, I don't understand why it's doing double. Because it's only showing single chat on my thing. So why it's showing two for every one? There must be a problem with their widget. Like why? Why you gotta do that? Can I reload their widget? How do you do that? Um, where's the car? It's here, don't you see it? It'll be here soon, I hope. Um, all right, let me see chats. How do we do this? Chat there. Whoa. How do you, how do you reload it? How do you refresh? Oh, <gasps> I fixed it, maybe. It's doing an invisible tint today. Can I make, should I make this bigger? Maybe a little bit, just bump this up just a little bit for you guys. Cause like, it's just this, it's, just use it here. Hey, we fixed it. Look at that. Yeah, it's gonna be here soon. So this is something I always forget about. Cause I have the car. Part of the problem is I wanna do like an actual thumbnail so I don't get the car to do a thumbnail. But then like some people don't know until like a little bit later, you know, I'm live streaming and they're like, ah oh, shit, I'm missing stuff. Sorry, business. Cool, okay. I gotta give it back to somebody too. Um, is the windshield on a Honda CRV difficult to tint? CRZ, ooh. That's a good question. I don't know. Let's find out. If you're not super familiar with windshields, then any windshield is gonna be relatively difficult in comparison to some. This looks tall. It's not a big car, but the windshield looks tall. It's like deceptive, like kind of like a focus. Google images for cars actually is super horrible.
Um, it just looks tall, like really dipped here in the middle. I, w I, I wouldn't know until I did it, but probably nothing terrible. It just really is very uniquely swooped right here. So might need a longer roll, but I don't know. 36 is usually cover it. Probably in for a little bit of fun on that one. I undersold the crap out of it too. <laughs> I almost thought you were bragging for a second. Notes say it's time to tint. Hell yeah. Let's go. It's not here yet. I like that though. I undersold the crap out of it. It's gonna be done in Pro Nano. Ooh. Ooh, I missed that part. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want to undersell on Pro Nano. That is one of the films that you don't undersell on. 280 for the whole car. Oh, oh! Stop! Um. Yeah, it's for for Pro Nano. That's that's definitely cheap. Uh. The re my regular, I'll do full with a windshield for 370. So, even a CRZ. Um, like, some people look at it and just like, yeah, it's a two-door hatch thingy. I'll still charge my base sedan price for something like that, just because, like, the way that I see it, like, some, some people, like, some people would be like, two doors should be cheaper than four-door cars because there's less windows, and that's true, but some of them are difficult in other ways, and then you also still have the time. Like, you pull in the car, you have the space, you, you're putting in, like, there's the prep work and stuff like that. So I don't like necessarily pricing things based on the amount of windows unless you start, like, you have your base price. And then you move up into, like, SUVs, which have, you know, more work to them. Trucks are really about the same work as, like, sedans in, in some cases. So, you know, trucks and sedans I'll keep in the same price point. Um, but then when it gets into like full size and mid size SUVs, then I'll bump up the prices for those. But coupes, trucks, sedans, they all start with the same flat base price. Any marketing tips for a new tint shop? Love your videos. That's how you get a question to answer right there. Um, Facebook was really challenging for me. Um, I see a lot more through Google My Business um, and just phone calls. So phone calls can like kind of drain you a little bit because it's just, you know, there's a lot of people that will be price shopping you. Um, but doing, trying to post regularly on Google My Business and just get more calls and conversations going seems to work better in this area. Um, I would still be on every platform that you could, but... You know, we were doing Instagram every day. We were doing Facebook every day. Uh, we were doing marketing on Facebook, and then just the amount of leads that we had to that we had to entertain. With every once in a while, we got a really good lead off of Facebook. But there's so many people that just wanted to sit there. And I swear to God, it was so annoying how this would happen. Somebody on Facebook would would just ask like 50 questions and then never book with us. And then somebody that knew they wanted to get it done, they're like. Two, two to three messages. Hey, how much is it to get this car done? Okay, cool. When can I get it done? Like it was, we'd love to answer more of your questions, but it was so crazy how it's like people just wanted to like absolutely waste our time. Um, so Facebook was really kind of difficult. I still would recommend doing, being anywhere that you can and just kind of figure out what works best for you. Um, I've heard in some places that, uh, what's the red website? Uh, Yelp. Yelp will do it. Uh, Yelp works well in certain areas, but Google My Business around here, which is Maps, um, generally does pretty well for us. So you could also do some hard Google advertising too. Um, but along with that, I would try to, to up your content game. Don't just post pictures. You have to try and look into just doing some short videos and boosting those and just whatever kind of content that you can um, and boost it a little bit. Because if you aren't showing some behind the scenes of your business, 
even if you aren't super proud about where you're tinning or whatever, just like try and dress it up, try and do what you do to like explain what you're doing and make it stand out a little bit because everybody is just posting pictures. Everybody posted pictures of nice cars, nobody gives a shit. You have to figure out how to stand out and look different in some way. So like these live streams, I don't get a lot off of Facebook, but it, all these live streams are still going to my business page on Facebook. So every once in a while I have a customer come in here and they'll be like, hey, how much is it to get this car done? And we've booked some live on stream, right through the stream. So the, the live streams are, are interesting referrals. So this is definitely taking time to build up. But if you let people know that their vehicle was live streamed, um, then they kind of, they're like, oh, really? That's cool. And they kind of just check it out. And then they have the ability to like share it. Or if their friend then asks about it, um, then they have something to show uh, that you did it. How much did you charge for the Impala? Uh, it depends on the film that they go, but the minimum on that is going to be 240 He said it was running 10 minutes late, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> no, if somebody tells you they're running 10 minutes late, it's usually, usually a little bit more than that. So, but he did communicate, and that's exactly what I like the deposits for. Is Avery NR similar to Geo Pro Classic? Yes. Um, so the main difference is, like, they're both color-stable uh, dyed films, lifetime warranties, both great films. Um, Avery... I'll give it the edge on the glue. The glue will remove super, like you just warm it up and it pulls off the glass. So if you ever have to redo stuff, Avery NR, it's great. Geo, we'll leave a sheet of glue behind. Um, you can steam it off a lot, but it'll still leave a pretty significant amount of glue. Um, as far as shrinking, uh, I think Geo Shield will shrink a little smoother, but they're both pretty good shrinking films, but they're, they're very comparable. It's where you go up from there, I think. They definitely haven't beat out in carbon. The NR Pro uh, is still a dyed carbon hybrid with a little bit more haze. Um, so the, the C2 kicks its ass in that, and then they have a better ceramic as well. Google is the best. I receive calls every day. I get annoyed sometimes, but hey, it's money. That's exactly it. And I, like, what, dry, what I really liked was, like, so I had this little message doohickey thing tied into Facebook and I have to set it back up. And it was nice because it like you, you notice really quick that people will ask the same types of questions and they really just need to be funneled into, like they, they have certain things that everybody kind of wants to know, like this is the vehicle, this is that, and okay, once you know that, then you can kind of direct them towards a price. And being able to show them content along the way was super, super helpful. So I had something that kind of facilitated that where Otherwise, you're sitting there replying, copy-pasting messages, or just keeping things on, like, quick replies, and that would help, but it, it, man, every time I get to send a text message, it's like, okay, let me stop what I'm doing, send a text or whatever. With phone calls, I can at least continue to do what I'm doing, but they both have their annoyances. Nick, Nick helps out with the phone calls and the messages, though, so that's having somebody to do it and to help out with it so helpful. It's, the, it's like so far the number one thing that can actually like <laughs> keep business going. Uh, Waves from California. Looks like I made it just in time and not too late. Welcome, man. Ooh, super chat. What's up, Dorito? Buy some Doritos on me? Okay, all right. All right, Dorito fund. Cool Ranch Doritos. How about that? I'll buy some Doritos. If I remember, I'll put them on my list. How about that? I have some stuff. So I made a little list for the stream of things that I need to do, and I totally <laughs> forgot. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I have like a longer 3.5 millimeter cable that I need to bring in. Forgot. I need to make my Bluetooth extension longer. Forgot. I needed to bring extra razor blades, forgot. Glass cleaner, tuck tape, forgot those. Um, and then Doritos. There we go. I'll put Doritos. You're officially on the list. 
of things that I need to do and then I'll forget to do. Uh, I'm looking to get from going to GeoShield from Global is is C2, oh, C2, uh, good to start out with, or should I go the vNano? Um, I would say I always lean towards lifetime warranties, but it's up to you. So my thinking is always, I always want to install a product that I know is guaranteed to last, and they have a five-year warranty on their economy ceramic, so it kind of fits in, it, it doesn't fit in quite as nicely. Oh, I think we have an appointment. Hang on one second. Hello, you found it. Good deal, all right. Good, hurry up. You got any
Sorry, guys, I totally forgot a thing. I forgot to leave you with this. My wife would be... It's a... <laughs> Sorry, uh, text is Someone now. take inventory, see what there he needs, go. lol. <laughs> you guys can talk to yourself. All right, so uh, we are doing the Impala in carbon now, which is super cool. This is something that... I have a 96 F-250. I want to tint the front passenger and driver side. Would it be a good idea to try it myself for the first time? I'm confident I can do it and have all the necessary materials. I'm wanting to start tinting. That's going to be, I think, a tough one to do. It's something I would kind of cringe at to do if I had one on my schedule. I can look it up to double check, but anything pre-2000 kind of gets funny. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, this is something I'm going to encourage everybody to do here. Um, it's something that I almost did not do this morning. Um, th there'll be times where you show your films to everybody and then they just kind of, you know, they they'll stick with your standard or whatever it is, but you never know who's going to want one of your better films. So show everybody. So we're doing carbon on this one. So I'm going to get pulled in. We're going to get started. In the Netherlands we do not have GeoShield foil, but Spool, SunTech or Lumer foil. Which do you advise? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, chat. Hi Dorito. Hi. SunTech is good, there's different type of film rolls. I would go with carbon to start off, they are sorta of expensive though. How many cars have you guys tinted? He needs a mic on him so he can answer a few questions while he walks away. My voice is so sexy right chat? Hi Ritz. Tisk 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 tisk. <laughs> oh, you guys love it. That's so great. Oh, thanks. Very sexy voice. Oh yeah, sexy voices, you guys. That's all I hear all day from you guys. Let me adjust this really quick. So one of the really cool things. Um, Dude, I uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely stream some of the cars that you guys do. You never know who's going to see them. So uh, what was really cool about uh, talking to this client, um, he, had, uh, he hadn't had window tint before, but he was interested in getting it. So he searched his car with window tint, which a lot of my titles kind of lead more towards very generic. Um, and so he actually found a video of his car being tinted here in the studio. So that doesn't always happen, but when it does, dude, I get so pumped from that. That's so cool. The video is messing up me playing my game. How about tinting? How does it, how does it fare if you try and tint? So... Some people ask if I get a bunch of clients that way. I really don't, uh, but it's starting to pick up a little bit. So, very, very cool. Very cool to have somebody that has seen the streams 
and now brought their car in, and then we happened to be streaming it too. It's like, let's go. All right, so um, this is actually all set to go, and this microphone should have been charging, so hopefully there's no problems. might have a slight camera issue. Hang on. All right, hang on. Let me turn this off, turn it back on. We had it set up. Are you strict with appointments? I don't do appointments. I should, but some people get there like 30 minutes late. Any advice? Appointments. Oh, you know, I, I was... Deposits. I think deposits are helpful. So you'll always have that where like some people are running late. Sorry. We were good. Now we're being not. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. This is just being funny. Um, but the question is, are you strict with appointments? No, I'm not super strict, but I definitely try to schedule some leeway. Um, I've definitely run into plenty of people that are just late. Um, and you just, that's one reason you, you try to keep this like, I, I'll schedule like two hours in between full cars, uh, like at the glass shop. And then we'll have a little bit of leeway. So if somebody's late, they usually have to like drop it off or something, or they know that, hey, I, I got other people to handle. So if they're significantly late and they totally screw up your day, like you just have to kind of be real with them. Like I can get you in today, or I'm not going to be able to. Um, but I think deposits definitely help. There's some people that are pretty strict with it that'll do like, uh, time slot, non-refundable deposits, and if you're more than 30 minutes late, then I'm sorry. We're going to have to reschedule or something. What happens if somebody... Okay, so we're, we're good. What happens if somebody cancels on you? Um, that's always not fun, but it helps a lot more than not to have deposits. So I, I had no deposits and I would just get random cancellation, like random people not showing up and it would happen pretty often. Um, so often enough that it just really irritated to me to the point where <laughs> I was like, look, I have to do deposits because I'm getting so many inquiries and it's just, there's more price shoppers right now than not. So until you get yourself mostly established, um, I would set some type of deposit. How much do you charge for deposits? Right now, just 40 bucks. So it's not even a very big deposit and there's people that'll charge half the job or whatever. There's, I don't think there's any realistic limit on, on your deposit. You could set whatever you feel like setting. Um, but it, w what it does is really helps out with communication. So if something happens, it's fine. Like we can reschedule, no biggie. Um, it's, uh, if there, you have a <laughs> really good excuse, I, I've refunded a couple of the deposits because I felt bad. So... Regardless, it, it's helped out a ton. I just, I'm getting consistent work in, I'm getting consistent communication from people. Like that's really for me what it was made to filter out was like you set up a, a bunch of appointments and then all of a sudden nobody's picking up their phone. You, you don't know what's going on. You don't know if somebody's actually gonna come in 30 minutes later, just not show up at all. 
But, you know, if somebody's coming in like same day too, like you don't necessarily have to take one, but I've certainly, like I've, I've worked from shops that never take deposits ever. And uh, they'll, they'll stay consistent, they'll stay busy. Every once in a while somebody doesn't show up. But, you know, after you've been in business for a long time, you develop that consistency. Um, but when you're new, it's really difficult. So there's actually one I got to check on for Monday. But yeah, from, from working for a mobile company, uh, especially, you'll have, <laughs> you'll have somebody like, uh, we would get phone calls as soon as somebody would schedule an appointment uh, from, from the shops, right? So we would have like somebody would call uh, with like a full Grand Prix, and the next thing you know, another shop is calling with a full Grand Prix, and then another one was calling with a full Grand Prix, and we're like, let me guess, this is the customer's name. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? And we're like, yeah, we already got three phone calls about that guy booking at other places. <laughs> Some people have no no shame in overbooking all over the place just to see how cheap and how quick they can get their car in. Which, if there's no barrier there, then hey. But yeah, I like them. But I also don't free schedule a ton of stuff. So it's really like, uh, this is the time, this is the place. And if, if we can't settle, <laughs> settle on that time or whatever, um, then it's not gonna get done. Drop off the night before. That's a cool way to do it. Like, there's a there's ton of ways to do it. This is the way that I'm doing it, and it's it seems like whatever like you can set up whatever system that you want to set up and whatever is great for your business. That's awesome. Um, like uh, my dad's shop, they I think right now they just drop everything off in the mornings, which I always feel like there's. I get a fair amount of people that still are waiting. Um, waiting on their cars to get done. So it's the, it's not that they don't want to drop it off. It's that sometimes they just don't have the ability to drop it off. So you kind of like, it's, it's one less thing that they have to worry about. It's like, oh yeah, I can wait a couple hours or whatever. This is the appointment time. This is it. Um, but there's a lot of them, like, if you want to maximize some of your potential, just getting things dropped off and being able to pull vehicles in and out and just kind of, like, bust through your day, um, that's really efficient. It's so, so nice to have things dropped off. Then you're not really waiting on, like, somebody coming in. Um, you, you have everything predetermined, so, you know, films are picked out, this is what we're doing. And then you can kind of like start to rearrange your day based on uh, the vehicles. Because you're like, okay, I'm going to work on that truck, and then I can line this one up, and then this one's not going to take me that long. Oh, I can squeeze a set of doors in right now. So it's a, it's a great way to manage your day. Your dad's shop, did he teach you? No, he, uh, he's a business owner, not a window tinter. Um, but so he uh, had a guy... Uh, teach me. <laughs> his, uh, funny enough, his, uh, do we? Oh, we do. Okay, we do. All right, I was just making sure. I'm like, I'm getting low on carbon. No, I have an extra roll. The, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, yeah, so he, <laughs> he had a, he had a business partner Uh, he had a business partner, and his business partner uh, owned a couple of the stores, um, and his uh, his business partner's son 
uh, learned for two weeks and then was left on his own to window tint. And then uh, he paid him to come teach me how to tint. So he was still making money while he was teaching me, but when you're teaching somebody, you like, you gotta slow down to teach somebody. So like for the first little while, um, I just had to watch him. Um, I didn't even have to touch anything, which, <laughs> which was awesome. And then it was just like slowly over time. Um, I, I wasn't a fast learner with any of this. It took me a long time to, to get pretty good. Um, but then the, the more you kind of pressure yourself to get faster, um, so a shop will definitely put lots of pressure on you to get faster against what you feel <laughs> you, you're capable of doing. And that worked out to some, to, to definitely benefit me, but very frustrating. And then you became better than him? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, he doesn't, I don't think he tents anymore. I think he went on to actually have a have a real job. <laughs> I don't say that to downplay tinning. Tinning's a real job, but like um, like a, a businessy job. We all like to play around with cars here and put stickers on windows. <laughs> you know, he used to hold uh, one of the craziest things was always just the way that he held a. a a conquistador or conqueror squeegee. I'll show you guys if I remember. He'd hold it like a ninja. I could never get used to it, but for swiping the bottom of a back window, he like, it, it, not this squeegee, but I always remember this. He would hold it like this. So like he took a, a conquistador or conqueror and he would hold it like this and swipe it. And it, it, that was just, oh, I couldn't do that. It was so weird for me. Carbon. Okay, so we are doing 20% carbon all the way around. For those of you that are just tuning in, um, we're double cutting, which means that we're cutting two patterns at the same time. You guys have never seen that before, ever. Except on every car, always. Unless they're frameless. Do I need to change this blade? This is acting like I need to change the blade. There we go. Tape the seals. Oh! You are probably right on that one. I forgot to tape the seals. Silly me. Okay, well, we're not too far, so we can put these over there. We can tape them. Thank you for the reminder, by the way. What was that question? How long did it take you to learn to be confident? Um, I mean, I, I'd say I didn't really feel completely confident until I was tending for maybe a year. Um, I, that's how. That's how I... I felt more competent after about a year because you're always getting like every situation is kind of like a new situation for you. Um, now it's, it's, I don't think it's as bad with the types of cars that are coming out, but there definitely are those cars that give you those challenges. Ooh. Texas is 25%? Oh, do they have yearly inspections in Texas? So I've seen people, though, with the right learning and the right mentality learn way quicker. I was going to aviation mechanic school at the time, too, so I wasn't, like, I wasn't treating tint like I'd be doing it forever. I hate tinting chargers. The back windows kind of are annoying, but they're, when you do it, when you get enough of them, you'll be okay with it. I would rather get a 300 than a charger for sure, but I, I, 
I had plenty. Oh, man, I got so many chargers. When the chargers first came out, it was like chargers every day. Um, I've been installing 25% carbon for a month. Just had a customer take, come back and say it didn't pass inspection, was registering at 20. Okay. Um, yeah, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. I can show you. Oh, did we forget? You guys, what is wrong with me? <laughs> We're getting ahead of ourselves. We talked about tape, then we started talking about inspections. So let's tape these really quick, right? I just put it back on. I shouldn't have done that. Let's tape these quick. Because these, these have some felt seals. They're not bad, but we can, we can make them a little better. So anyways, um, if you put whatever film that you have is always going to meter darker when it's on the glass. So I have a tint meter in my box that I can show you guys. It's something that I actually always, like, I'll use um, pretty often, but I, I forget to show you guys because everything's kind of predetermined by the time I go live. So the number that they give you on the box, plus or minus a couple percent sometimes, uh, is going to be the shade that the film is. But when you're putting it on the glass, it's not going to meter the exact same as that. It's going to meter a little bit darker because your factory glass, while it's not quote unquote tinted aftermarket, there is always a tint to it. So it'll be anywhere from 85 to 75. So you're right. When you put a 20... 25 on top of regular glass, it's going to meter darker than 25. You really need to put like 30, 30 to like 32%, honestly, to make sure that you're always safe. So, felt seals suck. What tape do you use? <laughs> honestly, I just have some cheap packing tape. Um, we're going to probably get some different tape here. This was something I put on my list. So there's, there's something called tuck tape. It's red. It works really well. Um, but I was like, hey, I, I lost my roll of tuck tape. What can I use? I, I had some packing tape, and I'm like, I wonder if this will work. So we've been messing around with, with the packing tape. And... It's hit or miss, like last time it didn't stick super well, but on more, more than not, it actually stuck pretty well. So it just creates a barrier. There's uh, people that have been telling me to tape seals for a while now, and I always shrug it off, but it legitimately is something that anybody can do to help keep the sides much cleaner. Just don't use painter's tape. I think that's what soured it for me. Do you tint taillights? Uh, no. No, it's something I go back and forth on. It's some, I'd like to do it for like the sake of the stream and stuff, but I just haven't really learned it very much, so haven't felt very confident in offering it as a long-term service or whatever, but that's how you get started. <laughs> is you just kind of do it. White tuck tape. I had the red stuff. I think somebody recommended the, the white stuff to me, and I, it was like I was looking at Amazon, so that's when I got it. Um, and it worked really well, so I'd, I'd be curious to try uh, and see if there's a difference between the two. But I'll say that, and then I'll forget, so come back in like a month, maybe. Maybe. Doing the tape on the side keeps the garbage. Yes, yes, it keeps the garbage out. Yeah, because you just all you're doing is creating a little barrier there. So lots of rubber seals out there, and there's also felt seals. So I mean, there's whatever amounts of buildup that'll, you know, because people wipe their windows, they don't clean out their seals. Um, so it's just. A quick little barrier thing that you just wrap it around and keep all that trash in there. And you don't have to worry about it spilling into your tent near as much.
Nice tip. So you definitely thank the community for that one. <laughs> this has been this has been a thing for, for a long, long time that I just I just don't normally do. But I've always been tinning differently. So here's very I don't know. It's it's unique for me. Because now I get to kind of set some extra time and schedule the uh I get to run the schedule where normally it's like I show up and here's your schedule. Oh, you don't have much time to do this job. You don't have much time. Oh, my God. Can I just get this in here? Uh, so there isn't necessarily a ton of time between certain jobs. And, and, and there isn't, you know, glass boards to cut things out on. It's just kind of like it's a shop. And then you have to figure out how to work around everything. So that's why... You know, this, if I took the time to always tape everything, I wouldn't have time to tint everything where I was tinting before. But here, yay. Happy. Happy we can do stuff like that. You know, and cover in little other things like covering the door panels. That's something I, I don't do out in the wild either. Okay. Cool, tape. See how long that took? A little bit, a little bit of time. Um, those are the reasons that I just never did it. Because, you know, you get patterns cut, get them on the glass, get them installed, move on. Keep going, go, 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 go. So it's really nice to actually be able to take the thumb off and do that. Efficiency, because the more cars you get done, the more money you can make. But we want them to look better. We want them to look better. <laughs> he said that in the wild. Yeah, it's, it's what what I like. Here is we have the. I don't know. Just go tin out in the wild. <laughs> it's nice being the boss. It is. Not even for the sake of being the boss, but just for like <laughs> stress reliever. Like, oh hey, I don't need to do that car or I can schedule some more time for this one because I know what it's going to take me to do it. Or it's more peace of mind. Where when you go tint for somebody, they're, they're, in their mind, they're like, how many cars can I get this guy to do? What's his breaking point, and how can I get there? <laughs> Just to it. Don't, don't want him to leave, but we'll always push that limit, and we'll always ask favors, and we'll always do this, and, and, and then before you know it, it's, it's just like, that's just how it is. Glass installation is the same? Oh, 100%. I see it. I see it firsthand. That's the, that's the other shop that I go to tint for. So this is mine, uh, but I still have an account that I keep on. I tint for them a couple days a week. Um, super helpful for when you're getting a business started. What do you think is a good uh, pay for an employee for four days? Uh, it depends on what they're capable of and what you can provide for them too. It's kind of a pretty open-ended question. Um, a, a lot of times, I, I mean, I think incentivizing people with commissions and paying them at least something dedicated that they know that they can rely on. Because you'll have those days where, I mean, unless you're just always busy and you know like this is the amount that I'll be bringing in in a day, 
figuring out a percentage of that or you know what a good hourly rate is but uh, most of the time um, you'll have your busy days and you'll have your slow days where there'll be like next to nothing to do you only have a couple of doors so the tenor would win on those days because you're paying like him a fee and then um, having commissions in there that incentivizes them to kind of push himself and go, go, go for the business, like that can be helpful too as well. That way it's like, you know, when you load them up with cars in a day, you know, because just hourly you're incentivized just to, just to do the minimum. You just show up. But commissions will incentivize you to, to get uh, more done. Only commissions will incentivize you to only tint the cars and not necessarily think about the shop. <laughs> um, so I, I've done all of them, and I think the best was uh, the the most the best for the tenor, like least amount of work, most money seemed to be commissions, just commissions, and then I didn't have to like necessarily clean up the shop, just be responsible for the immediate stuff that you caused. What camera are you using in your head? Uh, I'm using the uh, Hero 8, uh, but I also have a wireless HDMI transmitter. So Hero 8 plugged into the media mod uh, with a battery on it and then a Hollyland 400S Pro. It's not a cheap setup. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. You can get things done with just the GoPro, but it doesn't look quite as good. But it'll get you started, which is how I actually looked at it. I was like, this is good enough. I can do this. This is good enough. And then I tried to figure out something later that was better. And I think this looks better. I do wonder if it's a little stuttery, though. Is this stuttery? Hang on. It's going to go black for a second. Okay. Nice, thanks, looks good. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I watched a ton of live streaming help videos, so whatever, I can throw back to that community. Every once in a while, I put out a video. There's a few things I figured out with the GoPro, because like, having basically wireless camera, so you can literally just work, and stream, I think, I, I, man, I hope to see that. I hope to see an all-in-one solution that can just transmit a nice clean signal right from your head to a computer. And then you could set up a couple of them or whatever, but it just doesn't, doesn't exist. Doesn't really exist. Average, how many cards can you do in a day? Um, so there's, what I'm capable of versus what I actually do. So I'll typically do up to right now, um, we'll pull in three full cars uh, without windshields and then sometimes add in um, one or two windshields and then a couple of sets of doors. That's usually like an average day of what, I, what, I, what I'm more comfortable with doing. So used to get cars done in about an hour 15 without the windshield and then sets of doors inside of a half an hour. So that's just like, that's the go, go, go thing. And if you're just tinning and you're just trying to pull in as much work as you can and just kind of whip through it, um, you can make awesome money. I was doing working for a mobile company. I was doing, I think the peak that one year um, was like 90, 92 to 95 grand in a year. But it's six days, it was six days a week um, hustling for them. I made 50% commissions and I was driving all over the place doing stuff. So what, what we found out later <laughs> was what really makes a good hybrid model for mobile is you find some companies that 
want to add window tinting to their services. They already have a client base and they want to add window tinting to that because it makes sense. It won't be their main business, but it's a way for them to bring in some extra money. They have some extra space. And then you come in there with your film and you knock out all the work. They line up the clients, they figure out the shades. And then it's a, it's a real good partnership there. So if you find some good shops like that to kind of team up with, you give them one or two days in a week, and then you get them to focus on filling those days. So then one shop will have Tuesdays, one shop will have Wednesday, one shop will have Thursday, and you just alternate. So they have a full week to try and line up a schedule for you. Now, there's good shops and there's not so good shops. There's shops that will schedule in a 9 a.m. and then a 4 p.m. and you'll be sitting on your ass doing absolutely nothing and yelling at them for not being able to pull in tent work and they'll ruin your day. Then you'll have another ones that just, they can't, they can't, uh, you can't get a break. Like you're just always busy all the time, all day. So. Try a bunch of them, weed them out, like a dealership. Yeah, like a dealership, but not. it doesn't have to be a dealership. Do you play video games? Uh, not lately. I don't, I don't generally have much time for that. I wish, but generally no. I forgot what the last thing I played was, though. A couple games that I really liked was like Skyrim, Breath of the Wild. Not so much into the Call of Duties. More free roam RPGs that have like a lot of depth to them. Those are really fun. I played Mario Odyssey though, that was fun. But it took me a little while <laughs> to come around to it, but. Yeah, I'm super non non competitive with video games though. I generally don't like to play like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Um, I've got a lot of dealerships wanting me to tempt for them. Well, that's cool because then you can try and take that on. Um, dealerships want to pay the absolute minimum and make the most amount of money and they're very numbers they're very chaotic they're very numbers based so there are some really good dealerships and there's a lot of really bad ones so uh you can figure out pretty quick if it's worth your time to do i would honestly look it's a dealership i would charge them basically retail i'd be like look you can you can rope a payment for window tint into, into a monthly thing. Like you can finagle things a bunch of ways. You can basically get full retail out of them. Whether or not they're gonna wanna pay that is a whole nother deal. But full retail or near full retail based on minimums. So you can set expectations because what they're gonna do too is they're generally only gonna pay you every 30 days too. So you go in there, you do the work, and then they're like, oh yeah, we'll cut you a check at the end of the month. And dealerships, you're generally the last person on a dealership's mind. Unless you have a really good guy that just actually cares. Dealerships was like, blah, 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 scheduled the job to do. Okay, now I gotta go in a dealership and I gotta find him. Oh, he's out with a, cl a client. Oh, he's, he's doing this. Oh, he's doing that. Where are the keys? Okay, cool, I found the keys. Where are the sh what's the shades? Oh, I didn't talk to the customer about the shades. Where am I gonna do this? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. Can't you do it out in the parking lot? <laughs> That's dealerships. So there, you can you can work with them and you can teach them, but they have a lot of turnover too, and it can be it can be exhausting. So some of them are good, uh, but a lot of them aren't.
Let me set up a PS5 at the shop. <laughs> nice. Oh, come on. Just give it a little slide. Is Lexan any good? Ay, ay, ay. It's the best. That's why we don't use it. <laughs> it's the best. I don't use it all the time. Dealerships can be good business. Yeah, for sure. Um, this goes across the country. There's good ones, there's bad ones. There's good shops to partner up with, and there's ones that'll waste all your time and make a hundred excuses. There was a automotive accessory shop that was literally half a mile down the road from another automotive accessory shop. One of them charging 250 starting for a car. And there's this other one that swore up and down that they couldn't get over, uh, like, 150 to 200. They're like, we're on the wrong side of the road. And we're like, you're not. We're literally, like, there's this, this shop. We go in there. They charge this amount for cars. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're on the other side of the street. They're down from this road. Those people won't come over here. <laughs> but the real kicker was when that guy was um, on vacation, somebody else came in to do sales, and then all of a sudden sold the hell out of them within that week. And you're like... <laughs> like, there's a whole bunch of that. There's a whole bunch of excuses. Guys that have been in, uh, in sales for years and years, and they can't be taught anything because they already know everything. I'll watch brand new people outsell them all day long because somebody that knows nothing in sales is a better salesperson because they don't know anything. They know how to be nice. They know how to talk to people. If you have somebody like that, they, they can be an amazing salesperson. Because they talk to the person on the same level. They're, they're like, they try and explain it how they know it and then so that they're more relatable. And they don't, they don't question it near as much either. I think I've lowered this maybe a bit too much, but we can get it tucked. We're like a little far down on this one. Oh, come on. Just that little bit. Advice on just trying to start out? It's tough. Everybody's got a different path. Um, I would... Find yourself a little space that you can pull a car into, and I would get some, uh, I'd get some uh, cheap film and some tools, and just practice. Just practice on your own car. So, get a car, and then once you can do that, um, try and tint for like. A friend or family member. Just whatever they have, just try and do it. And then just start building your uh, your business from there. Yeah, we pulled this down just a little far. So that made it fun to try and talk. Not exactly super fun. Some seals, they're offset a little bit lower. Um, but the Impala is slightly, slightly taller. So anywhere that I pulled this film down, I just made it more difficult to try and tuck this down there. But we got it. We got it. We'll go over it. We'll make sure everything turned out nice, but... There's dealerships, California dealerships. 
They might they might be looking for tenors for a reason. They might not be able to hold people for a reason. That's also another thing to keep in mind. Some of those places they're always looking for help for a reason. <laughs> because they're a pain in the ass to deal with. They might not be, but they might be. Two thousand nineteen BMW scratched the window, owner wanted me to replace it. The hard truth is that you should if you mess up if you scratch a window, you mess up a car, I mean you can try and negotiate some sort of a discount or do it for free or whatever, but that's why I do this. I've been there, I've messed up cars. I've had to pay for stuff. Probably one of the most expensive bills that I got was, I mean, thank God, not anything um, over a grand, but I scratched the shit out of a door window, and that cost me 550 bucks. Not fun. So, when you work with a shop, sometimes, you know, uh, like the glass shop is a great example um they will actually if you know because they they replace door glasses and stuff so they know how to pull all that part all that stuff apart and they have all the stuff to do it so if i'm having a real big problem with something i can at least count on them to help me out a little bit um but if i damage something i like that's that's on me But cost, a little bit of the cost of doing business. There was, uh, <laughs> I heard a story of a convertible top, hard top convertible. They left it halfway open, and apparently it screws with all the sensors if you do that. And it was literally $4,000 to get that fixed. Like, what the fuck? When are you doing more boats? We do a boat every 30 years. <laughs> We'd been tinning boats for 30 years and we just, we do them every 30 years. I don't know, I haven't pursued it. And I haven't gotten any inquiries off of the video that I did either, so it's something that I'd have to actively promote and I just haven't. I did take a lot of little video clips of the one, so I could try and push it and see. But you know, when you have like regular business that pays well and it just kind of fits in your workflow already, I'm just kind of content. When are you going to start training people in your shop? Maybe in 10 years. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I got I to gotta put a class together. But dude, it took me so long to even get to like some sort of a happy place where I could do this. So I just kind of like enjoy doing this. Um, and, and I have, I kind of just want to make it look better before I did a class. Um, I don't have to, it's just a personal thing. And people probably wouldn't even care more than I would. So, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
When you cut a top edge, do you ever get a press line? Yes, yes. Um, Tim, do you lighter? Like, pull your blade out just a little bit more? Or, like, I mean, like, pull it back from the window just a little bit more? Um, or just cut at, like, a little bit of a different angle? But, yeah, if you press it up against it. Um, the nice thing is it, if you take the time to flip your patterns, um, you'll be cutting against the liner, and that shouldn't show in the tint. So I kind of will do things the opposite, where I have the tint on both sides because it saves me a little bit of time. Um, so if I press too hard, you'll see like a little score um, from the wind, from the uh, from the knife dragging across the the film. Should do a tint academy. I need should. There's a lot of things that I should, should do. And I have reached some sort of like, <laughs> I, like busy season. I, I, I'm keeping enough work to keep everything moving, um, but I'm not overwhelming myself with it so it's one of the, it's just one of those things where like I have to take the time to like set it up and then I got really annoyed with the booking calendar too <laughs> but I I don't know I I hear you guys and I'm trying kind of <laughs> or I have it in mind and the more comments that I get the more likely I am to do it so I have it in mind It's also something I, do, I don't know how to stream. That's part of it. I would love to be able to like stream it. But I'm not gonna, like I can't walk around with a GoPro all day and do it. <laughs> I could have some stationary cameras and stuff like that, but so it's like portions of it would be streamed, but I don't know exactly what and whatever else, so. We just got a business going. So like the way that I do these is I try and at least do a stream on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Every every day that I'm I'm here, I want to do at least a stream a day. And if you start spacing those out too much, like if I do like a two or three day class and I don't do any streams in there, that starts to become significant. So I want I really want to figure out how to do both. The plastic pulled it. <laughs> what tape do you use for the side seals? I bet you have been asked that a lot. <laughs> a few times. I should have known. As soon as I, I grab tape, it's going to become like the next carpet shield. Um, this stuff right here, uh, I don't know. It's just packing tape. It's perfect tape. But get uh, tuck tape, I think. Tuck tape, not duct tape. Tuck. T-U-C-K. Tape. Canon. Does GeoShield shrink better than Lexan? Absolutely. Absolutely does. Night and day difference on that. Is 15 used darker than 20? Yes. The lower the number, the more light gets blocked out. Two thirty seven on GameStop. It's holding. Might come back down, but it's holding for now. Hey man, need some advice. Been doing mobile tinting for a year now. Lots of people know me in my city, but looking for a garage for rent. They are scarce. Any ideas? Keep looking. <laughs> I know that's not that's not uh, great advice, but like if it's just hard to come by a spot, then just always be looking. You have what you're doing for now. Um, that works, and getting into a space would help you out um, with everything. So just keep looking um, or pay more. <laughs> I ended up just paying more. I, I got more space, so this unit was available, and it's one of those things. This wasn't what I was looking for. This was too big, um, or more space than I needed, more space than I necessarily. I mean, sure, it's always nice to have more space. 
But for like just a tint shop, this is fantastic. It's all wide open. You, you can rearrange it any way you want. The floors are coated. The lighting on the ceiling is actually decent. Um, and it's really easy to add to everything. Like this is such a good space. Um, the downsides to this is there's no front door. <laughs> Everything's around the back. Um, so that limits your walk-in potential, but that's okay because I'm appointment only. So that was kind of a nice little thing that I didn't even necessarily think about. Um, the, uh, uh, and as far as actual dollars, um, this is about a thousand-ish dollars more a month to take on than something like half its size. So it what it sucks, but it's also not that bad as a business. Like paying a thousand dollars more in potential space. Like, because you can't just add more space. You literally have to move. So taking on a little bit more than you feel comfortable with could be a good thing. Just don't sink yourself. But yeah, keep looking. I, it was hard for me to find something. I was really surprised. <laughs> there was a... Uh, uh, there was tons that was available without a garage door and very little that was available with a garage door. So um, they'll add it into your lease too, but if you're going to commit to the space for a significant amount of time, um, they'll, they can rope some things into your lease too, but again, it makes the whole thing more expensive. Uh, from what I found, that wasn't economy shopping. That was shopping in the range of like three, 3500 to like five grand a month for like a similar size space, they would kind of tailor it to what you needed. Like if you needed a little bit more office space, or if you needed an extra garage door, like they could actually make that happen for you. But this was one of those spaces that was just like, do you like the space? Yeah, okay, cool. This is how much it is. This is how much we want down and sign here. And there you go, <laughs> that, that was it. But three months rent. Is your place air conditioned? Uh, the front is. The back is not. But I have just, there's, there's only a little drywall separating me from the front with like some drop tiles. So if you keep that door shut and you turn on the air, a lot of it spills over in here and this insulation is actually pretty decent. So it stays cool. Not cold, but very comfortable. A lot better than some other places because it's summertime and I have a hoodie on right now. So that should tell you right now. <laughs> it's nice. Feel Pure Max wasn't any easier to shrink. I haven't tried that. Pure Max is easy to shrink. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it also could be just it's the first film that you're using, so it's just it's difficult to learn how to shrink. Period. Your state is always cold? I wish. Most of the year, yes. And then, believe it or not, we come into summertime. And last year, it went from 60 to, to like high 80s, low 90s, all summer. Very clear, hot, humid, all summer. Not a lot of rain. <laughs> just a lot of hot weather. And then it it just takes a dive. Is there a lot of shootings in Detroit? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it happens, but I don't really pay attention or go to Detroit that often. <laughs> so while we are Detroit Tent Studio, we're very much uh, not quite Detroit Tent Studio. <laughs> It's definitely got that rep. Have you ever thought about starting a tent school? Yes, plenty of times. Oh, 
come on. About to tent a, was that BMW? 330? Very straightforward. Brake lights will come out too. Twenty one Camry backlass. Uh no, it should be pretty straightforward too. Um, pretty average. There might be like a uh a thing in the way, like a brake light in the way. But it's nothing that you can't get through with like a bulldozer. I, I don't remember offhand. Somebody would probably know better than me. Um I'd have to just look at it for a second. I don't remember. It's been a while since I had that year Camry, but I think they have more annoying quarter windows than anything. <laughs> soap? Soap? We don't use soap. We just use water. Uh, we use baby shampoo and Dawn. Mixed. Together. Depends on the film, though. If you have a film that is generally a little bit more sticky, extra soap will help. Because the more you have to fight with the film to get it in place, the nastier your job is gonna turn out. So we cut these a little bit long, so hopefully this part will go well. It's it's definitely sticking pretty fast too. I, I Sometimes you just get windows that do this. So I'm just trying to finesse this in. You see me kind of like pulling the film back just a little bit, just getting that glue to free up from tacking too fast to the glass, and then just kind of slowly shift it down in there. But <laughs> we might not be able to get this one tucked super easy. How are you not putting fingerprints on the adhesive when you're spraying it? What? You're not. You're not touching the adhesive when you're spraying it. You like pull the film, pull the liner, get it in, uh, wet it, and then you are always grabbing areas of the film that either have the liner or are never gonna be shown on the glass. So like inside the dot matrix edges or something like that. So you'll see on like a back window. Do you ever worry about the wrong people coming to your house? Yeah, and I put a camera up and stuff. Uh, there's always that concern. Um, what I've found is, <laughs> like, people stick to their own. People are, most people are nice and most people are very, are, are like respectful and if anything it, it hurt my business being from home because just not as many people were comfortable coming to somebody's house, right? Like look at it from their perspective. If you're shopping around for like a window tint and you have a shop that's going to do it for like 250 bucks um, and there is an established business then you got some dude from their house that's also doing it for 250 bucks, like who are you gonna go to? Probably the one you feel more comfortable with, so. Or the one that can get you in quicker. <laughs> I think pricing would also help with that too. So I, I'd be careful about just doing, being the cheapest guy from home as well, but. There's quite a few people that, that'll tint from home and they enjoy doing it and I would love to set that up again. They don't want to hang out here, I want to hang out at home. I tan out of an apartment garage and all my neighbors think I sell drugs out of it. <laughs> well, you obviously don't, and that's great.
No pro- I set up an apartment garage, I just didn't do anything with it. What's your thought on two layers of 20? Uh, do one layer of five if you can. If you already have 20, then layering over it would be perfectly fine. Just if you're getting it done in a shop, that probably won't warranty it, but. You'll have limo. Cannon. Um. Do you ever do a second pass with a squeegee? Sometimes. Well, like, uh, not with a harder squeegee, but yeah, with the squeegee that I have. Working from home, you don't have to get business internet? Oh, tell me about it. I can't tell you how much of a scam business internet is. <laughs> My home internet was working, so both are through Comcast. One is Comcast Business, one is at home Comcast. Comcast here, they have great infrastructure and I have mostly no problems with their service. It's when you wanna leave or you need customer service that sometimes they'll definitely let you down because on their business lines, if you wanna leave, they will charge you two months to leave. So you have to give them a 60 day notice to leave their business internet. So it's the exact same speeds, uh, but they try and tote that it's like, you know, oh, well, you know, there's better uptime, better this, better that in the business line, of course, because it's more expensive and it's like bullshit. It's all the fucking same. Um, I know because I have both. <laughs> Except my business grade internet works, is worse on upload. So every once in a while, uh, we'll just have days where I can't stream because the upload speed will do this. It'll throttle. It will work, and it'll still be there, but it'll be all over the place. So, I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, home internet is like 80 bucks. Uh, business internet is tw uh, 240. Have you tried anti-fog film? I've got some cheap shit from Amazon that I wanted to play around with. I haven't used it. Um, and this kind of just ties into another comment. Somebody said uh, they missed my funny videos. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad. Um, I think uh, eventually we'll, we'll have a day where I just have an opening on the schedule. Who knows how soon that's gonna be. Um, but so my idea is I have a couple of backup plans for like a stream. So if I don't have an appointment, um, I could still come on and, and we could mess around with something like that. And that would kind of be fun. There's like this, there's this really annoying disconnect for me in videos though. Videos are a lot of work. Um, and they're not as much fun to make all the time. Because I almost, like, I don't script anything, but I, I sometimes keep messing up what I'm trying to say. So you hit the record button, you talk, you mess up what you're trying to say, and then you, like, re-record it. And then every time you stop and re-record, it becomes a little less genuine and authentic and, like, fun. Hello, Tint Studio, how can I help you? Oh, dang. I missed that one, I guess. You know, I just thought I could answer it from my watch. I wonder if that's gonna suck. Maybe that can start being a stream asset. Cause I can't, I can't connect my headset to my phone and the computer at the same time anymore. The, no bueno, does not work. Bose QC30s, I can flip flop back and forth all day long. Bose truly wireless, nope. 
Sorry, we don't have that feature no more. No video. No, there's video. Refresh. Almost, almost done with the doors. So, ugh. The, uh, so the back glass on this one, God, this is doing the exact same thing as the uh, car that, I did a Durango earlier, the same thing with the back door. It's just, soft touch panels are so hit and miss with, with carpet shield because they're not carpet. <laughs> um, I gotta, I really gotta find something else. Something that sticks more reliably. So it, it works really well on a good amount of doors, but it definitely doesn't stick to everything. Anybody that's used it knows. So it definitely helps, but it's not always the strongest of uh, things. I want to find a really comfy stool, roller stool, but it's got to be really comfy. So a few little drips, majority of it was kept off, so that's nice. Carbone. What's the next mob mod for the Explorer? Uh, it's gone. <laughs> no more. So blazer. Um, I don't know. I gotta I gotta tint the back. Uh, I gotta do ceramic on the back doors and the rest of the sunroof. Now that we finally come into like true summertime with it, we kind of can tell the difference between no ceramic and ceramic on the sunroof and stuff and everything's been good with the sunroof, so. We should all call Tint Studio, no. <laughs> You'll talk to Nick though. And he'll say like, he's busy, bye. <laughs> I didn't know you got rid of it. Yeah, it just, it's gone now. <laughs> okay, so we turn the car off. That blazer, that blazer helped me sell some carbon today. There's another guy that rolled in with a blazer too. Those are really popular now. I kind of figured they would be. But definitely super popular. All right. Let's see how this is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Close. We have just enough off this roll. C8 vet. I really like those. Um, I don't know if I'd ever get one, maybe far off into the future. But I think they nailed the, the C8. They made a they made people confused with Ferraris once again. <laughs> it's true though. It's like forget everything about performance. Purely aesthetics, you'll have somebody driving by in that and you'll have a bunch of people go, is that a Ferrari? 
Oh, that looks awesome. It's like when the Stingrays came out. Like, they completely changed it, and they actually made it look awesome. And then it wasn't about, like, horsepower and whatever. Yeah, sure. Car people care about those. Most regular people don't care about those. Most regular people are just like, oh, dang, that's a cool-looking car. What is that? What size roll? Uh, so in the carbon, we're using 40s. For most other things, we're using 36s. I don't really like that mismatch, but it doesn't mess with me much because, um, like, my main account is still all like color stable dyed. That's what I install still the most of. But we're running into a fair amount more carbon jobs and ceramic jobs. But it's like just carrying the 40s around to handle them. You make more, uh, make a little extra money on them to compensate for all the film and stuff. Um, so that all works out for like some longer rolls. But I think they have like, I gotta double check. I think they're on a 60-inch platform for the C2, and I think they're on a 72-inch for the uh, for the Pro Classic. So, it's been a minute. <laughs> Look at that carbon shrink like butter. I half forgot, as we're talking about it, I half forgot it was. Yeah, this stuff moves uh, pretty quick. Not quite as quick as the Pro Classic, but for a carbon, it shrinks really well. This isn't a super curved back window either. It's like, I'd say pretty average. Where it's got like a reasonable amount, but it's more flat than, than not. Is it worth getting a 70% on my windshield to help with heat? Uh, I really like it. It's a little difficult for me to wholeheartedly say yes to 70, but I'll tell you, there, there are people that really, really like it. So if they're just like, yeah, I don't want a tinted look, then yeah, go with 70 for sure. Um, and that only comes usually in ceramic because why would it come in pretty much anything else? If you try, like, if you're really, like, really on the fence, just try ceramic on your front door, see how you like it. If you really like it, then yeah, get the windshield. And that usually will convince you to get the windshield. You'll feel the difference between your sides and the windshield. It's nice. Kevin Rogers, oh, you do the Tint Depot videos, too. Guys, this is the guy that does the Tint Depot videos, right? <laughs> What's your thoughts on Lexan and plotters? Also, what is the plastic on the door panel called? <laughs> Trolling. Uh, my donation was long overdue. Love your stuff, man. Long time follower. Glad I finally caught a, uh, one live again. Oh, it's good to have you. Thank you. I really appreciate the 20, man. Yes, sir. I've, I've seen some of the videos, and I like what you're doing with it. They definitely needed somebody to help out with that. So feel free. Keep posting them in the group. It's all good. That's what I like. Like, I mean, I get people that just post advertising, and what drives me crazy is that it's just like a simple, it's like, hey, we have a sale on window film. Click. And then they post it, and it just like spams up the group. It drives me nuts. Um, but hey, if you want to advertise stuff, fucking just teach, make videos, do something, put a little extra effort into it. So what you're doing, I really like it. That's awesome. All good. Thank you for the 20. I'm glad I caught you. I'm glad I, I caught the, caught the name. 
because there was somebody that was asking uh, asking before, and I totally it totally skipped my mind while I was live, but I think somebody reminded me. Cut here, cut, cut there. Where's one? Can you do double five? No. It's better nano. Oh, what's better nano? Uh, nano carbon or ceramic? Uh, ceramics are gonna are gonna absorb more heat, reject more heat. Um, and you'll be able to tell with pricing too. So if you like inquire about carbon versus ceramic from a shop, you'll get one price and then the ceramic price will always be more expensive unless they're just really dumb. <laughs> so carbon, uh, carbon films are generally just carbon films and carbon on its own will block out about 50% of the heat and then from there, you could have um, a combination of the two. But carbon, because it's black, it can also be used to color the film. That's how you can get a purely carbon, carbon film. With ceramic, they generally have to uh, color it in some way. So ceramic, generally, it goes down to like the ceramics that they put on generally will be like down to like a 50 or 40%. And then to make them even darker, they have to do something. So they'll either do carbon or they'll do dye. So both are great. Um, but the ones that block out the most heat are going to be ceramics. And then carbons are going to be like kind of a nice happy in between where you can save some money and you still get some performance out of it. That's, that's the model I've set up here. You know, we're cold, a good, good time of the year, but we still have hot summers. So, you know, it's not a big jump to go into the carbon from where I start. So it's a, it's a nice, healthy mix of the two. Get some heat rejections. Heat protections. What's the last time you creased while shrinking? Mm. It's been ages. I don't know. Like a week ago maybe. <laughs> I, no, it's been it's been a little bit, but I don't I don't remember. If it was it was pretty minimal. Um I haven't had to redo a windshield from shrinking in in a while. Carbon and ceramic are the best, in my opinion. Yeah, they are. They get the most performance. So it just depends on what you're looking for and what your budget allows you to do. How much are your prices? Uh, it depends on what you want to get tinted. How many windows, front two, full thing, full thing with windshield, what film? Not gonna go through and list all of it, but if you have um, if you have like a realistic thing that you want to tint, I'd be happy to quote. I'm just not going to skip around the board and be like, <laughs> your two doors will be this, your full car will be this, your full car and carbon will be this. It's just what are you really interested in, and then I, I can help you out from there. Two ply, it's like toilet paper. 
More plies are better. Just for, no, more plies are more common. Two eighty, close. Close. This one is two ninety five. I need some glass aid. I'm sorry we're out. Um, I might have a couple of rolls left. I can still ship out. I've been sending rolls to people that really need them and like happen to. <laughs> I know there's more people that need them, but it's like. It's only so much I can do, so if, if like you get a hold of me one way or another, like through the stream or something, text the Tint Studio number and I'll try and get some out to you. Uh-oh. We good? <gasps> we are yes. Easy, easy one to take out. I have all the respect in the world for kids' seats now. Okay, so with this one, we have this brake light in the way, and I think there's bolts, like two 10 mil bolts that are up here. I've never actually removed one of these. I um, think I've almost removed one of them. You can pull it down and free up a little bit of space and slide the film underneath it and squeegee it out without actually having to remove it. It's a little funny to do it. But it can be done. So, kind of like the K5s, if the bolts were easier to get to, I think I would do it. But they're kind of up there. And we have a big old GoPro thingy on your head. Eh, you find other ways to do it. Where's my, oh, I've been walking buy this literally the whole time. Canon. I want to get 35 on the back, two on the two back seat windows and the small little windows, both sides of the back, like what you're cutting. Do you want to do the very back window or do you just want like the back doors and the back quarters? Also, what type of vehicle is it on? That would help. So the rear of the vehicle, uh, 15 Hyundai Sonata. Oh, okay. So just the back windows, so back doors, back quarters, and back glass. Um, that would be 180. 180 in the color stable. Dang. Canon. Oh, that's a really good deal, to be honest. Oh, hang on. Let me let me make it more expensive then. No, it's all good. 180 usually for backs. 240s if you want to add the front doors. Um, Jose with the 10. Good afternoon to everyone. How how uh, how you doing? Is it? Uh, it's super hot today. It's time to use that keg and spray myself. Thank you. Man, you've been such a big super chatter. I really appreciate it. You really good vibes to the community. Thank you so much. And it's good to have you here. Where are you out of? Like, what state are you out of? I don't think I've ever asked you. I take it not Michigan. <laughs> I like your style, it's pretty straightforward and you don't have to take things apart. That's why I like it. Memphis, Tennessee, oh, okay. Yep, getting hot. How's the weather year round in Tennessee? It's one of those like middle states. So I would imagine it's pretty awesome. 
and your summers are hot, but more comfortable weather year round. Do you just tint or you have other jobs? Um, tinting is my full-time income. And it's been that way for a long time. But I've added some extra things that really help. Um, so I really wanted to continue with live streaming. So I had to figure out how to kind of make some more money with doing all of that. So I put together a little online store. Um, and... Uh, Add revenue and super chats and all that. That that all helps. One oh seven in California. Oof. Oof. I think we're like seventies or eighties today. Are you reading comments? <laughs> It's one of my greatest tricks. One of my greatest tricks, uh, it's text-to-speech. Literally, I have to suffer and listen to every comment. <laughs> but it makes everything kind of go well. What's the best tint supplier? I, I think GeoShield, but I'm pretty biased to GeoShield, but they have amazing customer service, man. You can hit them up even on our Facebook group and they'll respond. <laughs> Tag Cubby or Burns. They're on it. Okay, so we're gonna install this one with the brake light. Again, it's a little tricky, um, not terrible, but they give you enough space. If this was an Audi or a BMW, I would be removing the brake light, but those are pretty straightforward to remove too as well. Um, the K5s, I'll loosen those. There isn't much else for brake lights where you have to remove a lot to tint them. You usually can squeak by them. Sometimes they'll be on the bottom of the window. And then from there, it's just a matter of uh, like squeaking the film in between. There is one like, if you want to talk about like an XJL, that one, uh, I'd probably have to disassemble the whole back for that. That's like one of the few cars though. So I basically create this whole big air pocket. Like tunnel shape, right? And then get that whole thing to kind of like lay down. And then you kind of like reverse install it. So like just squeak it up. Slide it in like you're, you're going from the top to the bottom, except now you're going from the bottom to the top. So we pulled back the brake light a little bit and flushed it out, swept underneath. And then it's just this light rubber seal that kind of presses against the glass. So it'll all turn out nice and clean. This is kind of just the trickiest part to like get it in place. But you have a fair amount of room uh, to kind of play with. So there's a little bit uh, looser side panelings to kind of wiggle the film back and forth. They don't press as close to the glass. So there's other things that are helping you out with that. Are you almost done? Yes. We got this and we got the quarter windows to do. And a little bit of touch up.
So side swipe. Side swipe's really good. Yeah, what tint do you guys like? That's a good question. You guys ask me, but you guys have been tinning too. Some of you guys have been tinning way longer than me. What's worked well for you guys? I don't care if you use Geo Shield or not. Y'all are welcome here to use whatever films that you want. I just want you guys to use whatever works best for you. I had to use something. <laughs> so, I like it. It works well for me. It's got its little quirks, but I've never ran into a film that doesn't have any quirks. Maybe one day we will. Used Avery forever, now Geo? Interesting. Same here, I used Avery for quite a while. It's just their, just their upgrade path. That was it. And I, I like, I was pretty neutral with it too. I didn't mind using Avery as like an entry and then pulling in the other ones. But then like, we used, uh, you know, I, I was using their carbon and then they had Pro Classic and it's like, well, you know. Order from the same supplier, the film's good, I like it. Why not? Dang! Super chat! Thank you, I appreciate that. I have the same Impala. I had it tinted somewhere. They messed up the third brake light. I don't know why they cut it out like that. Probably because they... <laughs> Sorry. Um, most likely, it's uh, it, it's just one of those things where it depends on, on where you go and who's tinting the car. Um, they see a brake light in the way. They go to see if you can just pull it really quick. It doesn't. And then they're just like, they stop there. They're like, well, you know, they have their schedule that they have to stick to. They probably didn't compensate any time for it. And then they're just like, well, you know, brake lights in the way. I've cut around a bunch of brake lights before. I'm just going to cut around this one. But the difference, holy oh, shit, where's my little, my little, my little orange crush guy. Did we lose it? We didn't lose it. I don't know. Um, the, uh, yeah, they probably just didn't know that you could tuck it like that. But, oh, yeah. Um, the, so the difference between, like, a brake light like this and a charger, I'll cut around the charger. But the reason is the charger has this really nice ceramic border that makes it all kind of look uh, seamless. These, they don't have that. They just have a straight rubber gasket. So whatever edge you cut is gonna look messy. It's just not gonna quite look right. Same thing with Audis, same thing with BMWs. So if somebody special requested me to cover up the brake light on a charger, I'd do it. But I generally don't. Um, who was that though? But John, John, thank you so much for the five. I really appreciate that. That was, I had the same car. They did a terrible job cutting out the brake light. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, I saw somebody do that on an Audi too. Somebody brought a uh, Audi A4 for me to retint a back window. And that's, uh, <laughs> they, the, the brake light was already kind of pulled out and they didn't realize it. And they just tinted it like that. So when they took a closer look at it, they pushed it back in and they had this huge gap around it. And it was ugly. He didn't offer to redo it. He said he didn't remove those brake lights. And it's just, that was an unfortunate mess. Those are the little things you'll pick up over the years. And I still have plenty of things that I'm picking up to myself. People were mentioning films, it's cool. Reno. It wasn't paying attention that much though. <laughs> Cracked a house window today. Oh no! Do you need a hug? 
That sucks. How do you crack a house window? Is it like a heat gun thing, or it's just one of those things that just kind of like it just went? All right, hang on. we got we gotta figure out how to get this this little guy here. No, come on. Might have to recut this one out, but no. Oh, we got it. Okay. There's like these doofy plastic panels. Sometimes they just get in the way where like one little point will push hard against the window. And then all you have to do is like pull it back a little bit, but everything's like, I can't, I can't get that back. So you gotta like either pry a tool in there or figure out a little point that you can like push it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Virtual window tent hug. Metal gaskets. Oh, that I don't know anything about, but that sucks, man. I know breaking windows is very unfortunate. Gas is expensive. No good. Cannon. Uh, flimsy glass that needs to be fixed tomorrow, but went ahead and did, ooh, and then there you go. Dang, that sucks. Um, two 10 mils and pull down on that Impala 3 brake light. Yep, 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 that's, okay, so that's what we thought. Good deal. So yeah, um, like somebody said in chat, I thought there were a couple bolts up there. So similar to the K5s. Um, you pull down the headliner, and then there's a few bolts that you can loose, loosen, lose, untighten, detighten. <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, that's a fly. He's on the outside. So, this, the difference between this and the K5 is K5 has these little push pins, and they make it a little bit easier to kind of get to. This, I don't know exactly how easy that is to get to, but that's how you do it. You'll pull this down and, and kind of like get up here and then you'll loosen those bolts and you'll be good to go. So that's the difference there. If you want to take that on, do it. Or you can do it how I did it. Um, but yeah, don't, don't remove them completely. Just loosen them up. It'll give you a little bit more, more headroom there. 10 millimeters that all car makers like to use. Yep. Yes, they do. They love their 10 mils. 7 and 10 mils. And the first one that you'll lose is a 10 mil. Where'd I put that 10 mil? Okay, so we got a little bit of touch up. And then, leave a, what? No, you don't leave light gaps around windows. Don't do that. Water will get out. You definitely never want to leave light gaps. Light gaps are like a hard no. Do you sell tint? Yeah, we have it on uh, on the website. I do. I always say we. I have it on the My Tint Stuff website. Flagglass is a really underserved market. Like, there are people that do it. Uh, but there's not much content that's put out for flat. Aw, 
that was a nice one. Five dollar super. From Lance, thank you. Cannon. Lance with the five, thank you dude. Love having a stream that I can come to to get my mind off stuff. Oh man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the five. MK4, uh, if your state has a max of 35% tint and someone asked for 5% tint, would you do the tint job for them? Um, yeah, so it, it's uh, based on like, if you, can, you can legally have it if you have a doctor's note, so that's on you to have. I have limits on the windshield, um, but like Michigan state law, for example, says 35% reflectivity um, on all windows. Um, that has nothing to do with the shade. So what the real state law is, is nothing but the top four inches. Nothing on the top four inches of the window, and then, uh, or no, just the top, sorry, just the top four inches of the window and the windshield, and you can have as dark as you want on the back. So we don't really have shade limits. We have uh, measurement limits. What is that gray tool that you use? Uh, what, this one? Felt card or clear crush squeegee? Um, and then I have a clay bar that I also used. I missed the, would have been one of those. So if it was something I was using to help clean the back glass, it was a clay bar. Oh, we also have the side swipe, side swipe with the blue squeegee. Um, and then a bulldozer, maybe it was a bulldozer. I think the bulldozer is like the most gray tool that I have. So something like that. Yeah, like this one. This is a bulldozer. Sorry, I heard that a few times and then I kept getting distracted. <laughs> Happens. Um, oh yeah, this back window. Where do you get the clear max without the angled edge? Uh, I got this from Sun Distributing a while ago. They'll probably have both. The, the beveled, I think, is actually better. Um, it honestly, it, it's better. Uh, I just, I think at the time they didn't have it or I just picked up all the squared off ones or something. I don't remember. It's been a little bit. I can get more squeegees. Where's the chihuahua? <laughs> the chiseler? Um, I actually don't like the chiselers. I have them. People like them. I don't like them. I like the gator blades instead. I think gator blades and tri edges are way better for touch ups. But the little chiseler is kind of like one of those staples that's like easy to carry and people still use. It's got kind of like a harder edge to it. But I do touch-ups in stages. So I have the, um, I have a tri-edge. I have a, um, I have a, a tri-edge. And then I've got, I've got like a soft gray card too somewhere. It's probably in my box. And then I'll use the corner on a gator blade. Reason being is this is a little bit more rounded, I think. And you can get a lot of pressure from one of these corners. So this corner here is really like a little chiseler, but it's more functional because you can use it to like scrape all the edges and stuff. So I'll often do that. The gray tool that you use to just scrub the back window. Uh, it's either a clay bar, because that was a green scrub pad, so that was a triage scrub pad. Gonna, gonna make sure everything's all 100 with this one. Good, good, good. Dang. You know, should have been taping a long time ago. 
<laughs> you want like flawless looking side edges. Like they'll always be something. But like I'm actually really shocked at yeah, I should have been taping them. Man, they it's just it's one of those little things that make it look extra clean. All right. When you tape wizards, you we're going to just keep taping stuff. We'll find better tape. It'll be a regular thing now, I think. It doesn't take a long time to add and it's a nice thing that we can do here. You don't have to, just like you don't have to use a clay bar and you don't have to use a razor blade and you don't There's things that you don't have to do to still get a good result. But if you want like that teensy bit better of a result or it, it's something that'll that that can't hurt you and doesn't take long to do then it, it's it's worth doing so that might happen with some more seals eventually here um but <laughs> there's there's no reason that i'm not i just i get into these weird positions where if i go to tint something on stream I don't want to like not ever be able to put something back or like, you know, so I'm really comfortable just, <sighs> I, I, if I take a, a seal out, I want to be certain I, I have everything available to put that back together and I have the capability to put it back together and I don't ever want to be stuck not being able to do that. So that's why I'll definitely shy away from not pulling them, because I can tint them without it. But, kind of in my spare time, it might be something that I play around with more, and then when I'm more comfortable, we'll do it more on stream. But that's kind of that. I don't want to not be able to put something together and like have to go run and get something and be like, hey, I gotta go to Home Depot, I'll be back. <laughs> and then I leave an appointment sitting and stream sitting and yeah that's not gonna happen not when it's something that i could just you know have never had a problem with make it into a problem canon this gets super annoying can you buy big sets of door panel clips uh, probably, but they're all going to be a little bit different. So I'm sure you can get generic sets of clips and stuff. Um, that is something I would definitely ask in my Facebook group though. There are people, um, there's also another window tinning group, bottom loading window tinners. They pull everything apart and they have instructions on how to do it. So window tint stuff, bottom loading window tinners, those would be some good resources for you. So they'll, they'll be able to point you in a clip resource, I'm sure. And <laughs> you watch. You'll post it, and my group will be like, why would you want to check it apart? But then if you if you post the other one, like, hey, I don't take anything apart, they'll be like, you should take it apart. You post that you don't take anything apart, or you do take stuff apart, they'll be like, don't take it apart. Do you have uh, White Crush in stock? I don't sell those. Uh, Tint Depot does. I don't know how you do the GoPro thing for so long. It's, you just have to do it. That's it. This wouldn't be, this isn't possible without, without doing that. So I really want to do the streams. So if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. Now I added to it, but I think it was a welcome addition. So everything looks better. It's a bit much. But, you know, I like it. What considerations do you make when tinning a car with white interior? Um, 
I'll probably like flip over the, the mats and stuff when I'm throwing tint in in regards to like a customer. Basically, when you're, when you're talking to them about shades, everything's going to look a little bit lighter. So a 20% is going to look more like 35, 35 is going to look more like 50, 5 you'll still be able to see in a little bit if it's a really light interior. Um, so there's, there's those things to take into consideration, but. I mean, it definitely was a challenge wearing all this when I was tinting uh, out of the garage and it was super hot, but we still did it. So I don't know, you just do it, just do it. Oh, we gotta put this back in. So I don't ever put child seats back in the way that they told me to. Um, I just set them here in the back seat because I don't want to take on that liability. Sorry for the slight inconvenience, but I just don't want to be responsible. So that was something personal that I figured out a long time ago. I was like, I don't want to be responsible for this. And then it turns out a lot of people also feel the same way, which is good because nobody ever told me to do different. Sweet. Carboned. 20. All the way around, looking good, start to finish. Hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. Do it, because they're free. Canon. Same here, I'll take them out, but not strap them back in. You know, it was just one of those things, like I, I didn't, just happened to feel that way one day. Like, it just like, I don't feel like putting it back in. One, because you can be a little lazy about it, and two, because, like, yeah, responsibility for it. That is something I wish somebody told me. <laughs> Have you ever used knifeless tape to cut window film? It unfortunately doesn't work. When are you going to return the car? Never. It's mine now. It's here. They're waiting up front. So we're going to end the stream. Um, but it was super cool. So they actually watched this, a stream of their Impala getting tinted, and they saw the channel before we even did it. So we don't want to waste too much of their time. Um, but we've been here for a couple hours, so we're right within, I say, about two and a half to three hours at the most. We're right in that good time frame. Love you, Dad. <laughs> That's happened a couple of times. Dang, boss. Yeah, this is becoming a trend. Boss with the 25. Good God, man. Hi, Matt. As usual, I wait till the last moment. Thank you for the effort you put into these live streams to enable some of the viewers to learn from your art. Great job again. Have a great weekend. See you all chatters. Guys, clap it up for Boss. Boss is a boss. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the support, man. And yeah, coming in at the last minute again. Do you Michigan guys have Menards or just Home Depot? No, we do. <laughs> we have Menards. I like Menards a lot. I'll go back and forth between Lowe's, Home Depot, and Menards. They all kind of have some little advantage. How much should I charge if I'm a beginner but using GeoShield? There's no reason you can't charge what I'm charging. Just because you're a beginner, it might take you longer, but at the end of the day, if the job looks good and you, you did your best with it, there's no reason you can't charge what I charge. Or more. Um... Yeah, beginners give themselves a hard time. Like, there, there's nothing that, uh, at the end of the day, if both of them look clean, you wouldn't be able to tell if one was mine and one, well, I mean, I hope mine looks better, but you know what I mean. If they both look good and the customers are happy, there you go. Doesn't matter if you've only been tending for like a month. All right. Oh, dang. Oh, dang, we got one more. Jose, Jose coming in again with the five. Thank you. I have said, uh, I, I have to say well done uh, to all the window tint guys. Have a nice day. Thank you, man. That's really nice of you. I like, that's, it's cool to have people that just like to throw good vibes into the stream. 
What did you charge for this Impala? Uh, this was two, this was two ninety five. This was a carbon job. So, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we're gonna shout out some super chats, uh, and then we're gonna end things. Big shout out to Jose, uh, Boss, Lance, John, Jose, Kevin, Dorito. <laughs> Your name always makes me laugh, Dorito. Dorito telling me to get some Doritos on him. <laughs> Oh, good. All right, guys. Uh, next stream. Next stream is going to be uh, today is Thursday, so Saturday is going to be the next stream. Um, morning or afternoon, early afternoon, I'm not sure yet, but we do have appointments then. Don't remember what they are either. We'll be live. We have some stuff to do. So we'll be back on Saturday. Hit the bell. Uh, that's the best way to know when I go live because it's all over the place, so just hit the bell if you don't want to miss them. So the other thing is join the Facebook group. Sometimes I'm going live in the Facebook group before I come on here, just because it's kind of a place that I can do anything. So uh, thank you guys again for hanging out. It's always good to have you, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. You buy Doritos and I get salsa? Ew, Cool Ranch Doritos and salsa. I don't know if I'd quite go for that one. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Bye-bye.